The Leviathan Chronicles. Season 3. The story thus far. The buffer station has been reached deep in the Congo. After descending into a massive sinkhole in the Central African Republic, Sension, Rebecca, Jason Sterling and Whit Roberts have arrived at a mammoth stone temple where the aliens have been sequestered since escaping Leviathan. Jason Sterling has told Whit that their secret plan can now commence. Back in Leviathan, Evangeline has awoken from her coma. McAllen has returned to the immortal city in hopes that the Starstone fragments she recovered can neutralize the deadly virus that is slowly destroying Leviathan. When Evangeline learned that the two Seraxian aliens she had been keeping prisoner in Leviathan had escaped, she passed McAllen a note referencing the secretive Hayon project. And in Tokyo, Jeffrey Tully and Anton have rescued Oberlin St. Clair from the custody of Yakuza gangster Kasunori Tanaka. After Tully returned his son Toshi, Tanaka-san double-crossed Tully, attempting to kill him after the exchange had taken place. But Anton helped subdue the gangster and force-fed him pieces of poisonous pufferfish in order to elicit information about Black Door's activities. With Oberlin now in tow, Anton and Tully have learned that Nankatsu Industries has been building a secret base called the Crossbow in the northern Canadian province of Nunavut. And now, Chapter 44, The Buffer Station, Part 2. The thick fog of humid moisture moved slowly through the dense forest canopy of the Congo jungle. From the air, the jungle was a lush, undulating emerald coating over the earth that seemed to stretch endlessly in all directions. Below the treetops, the shadowy jungle seethed with a primeval malevolence as all the inhabitant creatures shrieked warnings at the four strange intruders that had finally reached the entrance to a remote sinkhole that plunged 300 meters into the bowels of the earth. At the bottom stood a large, ornate stone temple that was almost completely covered with vines and vegetation. My God! Astounding. Sension, Rebecca Von Alt, Whit Roberts, and Jason Sterling stood on the narrow lip of the earth, looking down the plunging embankment. The group wore their padded, armored environmental suits that were once white, but now smeared with the brown and green stains of the deep jungle. Tell me your wonderful suits have jetpacks built into them so that we can merrily fly down to the bottom of this pit. Sorry to disappoint you, Jason, but feel free to jump off the ledge if you're in that much of a hurry. Let's focus. How are we going to get down? I think I see a path off on the far side. There. It looks pretty overgrown, but it seems to wind down to the bottom of the other side of the sinkhole. We can probably make it to the trailhead in two hours. We better hurry. We'll lose the light soon. That'll make the descent impossible. Maybe. Then we better get moving, Senshin. We're not waiting any longer. Not for anything. The group carefully hiked around the precipitous perimeter of the sinkhole, holding onto the trees and branches for support until they reached the trailhead on the opposite side. The four of them descended carefully downward through the steep switchbacks to finally arrive at the floor of the massive sinkhole. The team removed the hoods of their environmental suits to better take in the enormity of the temple. Sension looked up at the sky, now only visible through the portal of the cavern ceiling, and it seemed like the earth could now swallow and engulf them all too easily. He didn't even notice Whit Roberts and Jason Sterling talking privately off to the side. So, when do we get rid of the immortals? After we have secured our method of extraction, our first order of business will be assessing the state of our partners. Once we do that, we can neutralize any threat that Sension and Rebecca represent. But for now, we wait. We may still need them. Have you been able to communicate with the aliens? For most of the jungle trek, it's been difficult. I can sense only the strongest emotions they project at me. They don't like the immortals. They were testing the extent of their powers on Rebecca. What are you sensing now? They're weak, but alive. They're eager to leave this place, to get to the crossbow station, to begin our plan together. Sension saw Whit Roberts and Jason Sterling conferring privately and felt an instinctual need to break up their conversation. Come on, let's move into the temple. It feels safer there. The aliens are inside of the temple, Sension. I can sense them, and they can sense us. 
Be careful. The four of them walked around the length of the temple and approached a rough carved stone archway that soared above their heads. Sentron removed his machete and began to hack away at some of the thick vines that blocked their path. After you, Whit. Thank you, Senshin. Wit led the four of them inside, where a long corridor stretched out before them. The floor was constructed of the same massive stone bricks as the exterior. The smell of age and dust permeated everything in the corridor. This is odd. What is? Can you see? Obviously. I'm looking right at you. That's just it. Look around. There's no source of light. No lamps, no torches. There's not even much light coming in through the entranceway. Lumaflora. Look at it. There. Between the cracks in the bricks and on the floor. Just like the cavern ceiling in Leviathan. Immortals must have built this temple. But when? The construction looks like it must be a thousand years old. That's when the aliens supposedly arrived, right? Let's keep moving. The corridor continued deeper into the temple, slanting downward at a slight angle. The four of them walked for almost another five minutes before the corridor ended at a stone block wall in front of them. What the hell? It's a dead end. We must have missed a turnoff somewhere. Maybe a door. Ah! Wit! Wit, what happened? I'm... I'm fine. I just touched that wall, and it shocked me. I can still feel the current in my body. Sension approached the wall warily where the corridor ended. He brought his face close to it without touching, and then carefully examined it up and down. He lifted his hand up and slowly placed it on the wall. I don't feel anything. Wit, where did you put your hand? That's crazy. My hand touched the wall right here. Ah! A small conflagration of sparks erupted from the stone wall where Whip touched it, sending him sprawling to the dusty floor. What the hell? Why aren't you getting shocked? I think I know why. Rebecca walked forward and placed her hand on the wall beside Sentience. She felt nothing other than the cool stone against her fingertips. This temple, it was built by immortals. They didn't want any humans sneaking around, so they installed a security system to keep away anyone that didn't possess traces of Starstone energy within them. If they wanted to keep humans out, then there must be something valuable to Leviathan within. I'll check for some sort of release handle. Rebecca, or... look. Right there. Rebecca looked down and could see a carving in one of the large stone bricks on the right side. As she looked closer, she could see the outline of two sea dragons opposite each other. Between them was sketched a pedestal containing an oval jewel resting on top of it. It's Leviathan's flag, our symbol. Sentin exchanged a look with Rebecca before laying both of his hands on top of the dragons and felt a shimmer of energy ripple through his body. Then suddenly, a colossal rumbling could be felt somewhere deep inside the temple. The heavy stone wall in front of them descended neatly into the floor through seams that were nearly impossible to discern. I'm guessing we go this way. That must have been the security system, to only allow immortals inside. Gee, good thing you brought us along, right, Wit? The four of them proceeded deeper and lower into the temple, noting the bits of unfamiliar technology now appeared around them. A holographic screen here, a titanium knob there, until finally they entered what appeared to be the nerve center of the temple. A heavily scratched pair of metal blast doors stood in front of them, with massive turnscrew latches. Sension! This is the source. The aliens are here. They're brighter than anything I've ever seen. We need to be careful. Jason, you take the left, I'll take the right. Strange, flickering light flooded through the heavy stone doors. Inside, the intricately tiled room was roughly circular. The ancient floor was dominated by a large obsidian disc built into a raised platform over 15 feet in diameter. Glowing sparks of light darted randomly like tiny meteorites penetrating the night sky. Behind it was a stone shelf with various controls, levers, and toggles. On the opposite side, a glass screen filled most of the far wall, containing satellite imagery of various locations on Earth, along with unfamiliar overlays conveying coded information. Sension, what is this place? Um, I'm not sure. It's a tracking station to every keyhole portal on Earth. From this station, you can... <laughs> Jason! What is it? Are you okay? There. They're here! On the left side of the room, a heavy stone door protected a small antechamber. In the center of the door was another carving of the twin dragons of Leviathan. Wit approached the door and pushed as hard as he could, trying to open it. It's sealed. 
Senshin? Senshin slowly walked over to the stone door and placed his hands upon the two dragons and felt a dull shimmer of energy ripple through him. The door shifted ever so slightly and then slid down to disappear into the stone floor. The four walked carefully into the small room and were utterly astounded by what they saw. Against the far wall sat two beings kneeling with their heads bowed. Their skin was a deep cobalt blue and heavily pebbled in texture. And though it was hard to discern through the shadowy light of the chamber, Sension failed to detect any evidence of a mouth on either one. They simultaneously extended their legs to rise to a standing position. Every motion was perfectly synchronous. They slowly lifted their heads and turned to stare at Senshin, Rebecca, Wit, and Jason with blazing orange eyes. Cautiously, Jason Sterling stepped forward and knelt on one knee, bowing his head. It is an honor to finally meet you. I look forward to our new beginning with Sorax. Rise, Jason Sterling. We have waited centuries to be free. The time has now come to begin our plan and finish our mission on Earth. The voices of the aliens echoed in the minds of everyone in the room. Despite lacking in the possession of any perceivable vocal cords or mouth, the aliens' communication seemed as clear as if the words had been spoken. Senshin and Rebecca turned and exchanged urgent glances. Plan? What plan? What mission? What the hell are the two of you talking about? One of the blue-skinned Seraxians turned to take measure of Senshin. This one is immortal, like the witch Evangeline. So is the female with him, Jason Sterling. Why have you brought them here? No, you don't understand. We're here to free you. We're here because we're not part of Evangeline's collective. We left Leviathan. We rebelled because we felt imprisoned there, just the way that you were. We're different than the others. Elgar and Karana, you must believe me when I tell you that we never knew that both of you were still being held against your will on Earth. Evangeline kept your presence, your custody, a secret. Had we known, our rebellion might have occurred sooner. When we learned of your imprisonment, we decided to help the Black Door Group rescue you. Senshin aided Whit Roberts, and then located Jason Sterling and myself. We worked to assemble an entire team here to rescue you, to help you get back to Sorax. Sorax. Yes, your homeworld. Our homeworld no longer exists. I... I don't understand. The Soraxians lost their planet eons ago. Now, they're just trying to reunite with their people. Are there other Seraxians on Earth? No, not yet at least. I... I don't understand. We Why need we... to get the aliens to a specific rendezvous point for their safety. Some place far away from here, in northern Canada. It's a fortified location called the Crossbow Facility. We had it specifically built in secret for the Seraxians. Well, we can make all the appropriate arrangements when Alexander returns from Bangui. I'll be able to contact him from outside the temple, but we have a lot more to discuss first. I want to know why- But Jason Sterling was already ignoring Senshin. He and Whit Roberts approached each Seraxian and gently allowed each alien to lean on them as they moved back into the main chamber, pushing past the immortals. Senshin and Rebecca exchanged concerned glances before following them. You know your big move? Yeah. I would make it sooner rather than later. Agreed. The four of them, plus the two Seraxian aliens, moved back into the primary chamber. The flecks of sparkling light darting inside the black obsidian disk seemed to grow in intensity as the aliens walked past. Senshin, have you seen anything like that black disk before? I can feel it radiating a lot of energy. Feels like a star stone, except... Except not, I know. I can feel it too. It feels more like a keyhole. The aliens approached the stone console projecting holographic controls. They moved their hands above the surface of the controls like they were searching for something. The control station is locked. Senshin, you appear to be the consummate locksmith. Would you mind doing the honors? Not your fucking lackey wit. You're going to slow down and explain to Rebecca and I what the aliens are doing here. What is this place? You called it the buffer station. What does that mean? Many centuries ago, the Seraxians aided Evangeline in creating the Keyhole Network. They helped replace transdimensional portals throughout strategic locations on Earth. Your glorious underwater city couldn't have been created without them. Raw materials were able to be instantly transported to the bottom of the Marianas Trench. But you see, when keyholes are born, 
they become entangled and must always be created in pairs. I think I've been through more keyholes than you have, Sterling. You'd be surprised, Senshin. Benu is very helpful in funneling some of your immortal technology to the Black Dog Group. Your little rebellion was a very convenient way for a lot of technology to go missing. You're lying. The keyhole network was largely shut down after we rebelled, so it wouldn't have helped You're you. You're wrong. The network was never shut down. Evangeline created booby traps by placing some of your keyholes open on the outside of the deep trench wall of Leviathan. She kept your rebellion too scared to use them. We don't need a history lesson on our own rebellion, Sterling. Why is this place called the Buffer Station? Have either one of you ever considered what would happen if one keyhole was destroyed? It would deactivate. It would remain a dead portal without its matching pair. Ah. But what would happen if you were already in transit, between two keyholes, right before your matching pair was destroyed? Where would you go? Senshin looked at Rebecca, dumbfounded. The question had never occurred to him. The Seraxians have extensive experience building portal networks. They knew that their survival depended upon Evangeline's safety. Given that almost nobody else knew of their existence, they were forced to maintain a reluctant interest in keeping her alive. When a keyhole is destroyed, its pair wants to find its partner. The portal channel will instantly gravitate towards the next strongest transdimensional energy source. This temple was built as a safety precaution for severed connections, like a lighthouse, like a buffer. Senshin looked at the aliens and then gazed back at Jason Sterling. He despised the fact that this mortal, this mutated mortal, stood before him with more knowledge of immortal technology than he possessed. How was a very powerful energy source deep under this temple? Something that I believe you call a star stone. Jason turned for a moment to look at the aliens before shifting his attention back to Senshin and Rebecca. A very special type of star stone. It acts like a powerful magnet, both powering and anchoring the keyholes stationed on Earth. If a being is caught between two damaged keyholes, then the portal stream gets redirected and terminates here within this temple. The aliens entered the portal in Leviathan, but then Jeffrey Tully obliterated the keyhole in Mount Shenglong. The aliens were transported here. They've been here the whole time. Then why hasn't Evangeline swept in and captured them again? She knows this buffer station is here. We don't know, but she could be arriving here any minute. We need to leave with Elgar and Karana right away. I agree. Let's move outside the temple so I can contact Alexander. We're thinking of a quicker method of transportation. With airfares so expensive these days, I think we can find a more direct route to the crossbow facility. If you'd please do us the honor of activating the control console, Senshin. Senshin looked at the strange dark circle in the center of the room and then stared at the massive console of controls off to the right. He thought the disc might resemble a peephole or telescope peering into the darkest night sky, full of stars and shooting comets. He recognized the control panel as an older form of immortal technology. Dust covered most of the controls, but on the left side, the even coating of dust was disturbed, revealing an engraving in the stonework. It was the same inscription of the sea dragons they found outside the chamber. Who touched this? We did. We tried to activate the temple portal to escape. And? What happened? The witch designed the temple to only be operated by Leviathan Immortals. The controls will not respond to our touch. Or those of humans, I'm suspecting. This is why we were brought here, Senshin. You needed an immortal to operate the station. I need you to help us save the world, Senshin. We're not safe here and we need to move quickly. Please, activate the control panel. Before I do, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to renegotiate our previous arrangement. Ah, we were waiting for this moment, Senshin. I was looking forward to you finally gathering the courage to show your true colors. You shouldn't talk about true colors. You betrayed the country you claim to protect. You've killed countless members of Leviathan and my rebellion that have been secretly guiding world events on the surface for centuries. Do you have any idea how many lives we've saved? Yes, but it'd be a terrible shame if there was no one left on the surface for you and mortals to fret over, wouldn't it? What if there was a global genocide, Senshin? And what if that Holocaust was entirely your fault? How many deaths are you willing to be responsible for? Thousands? Millions? Senshin lifted his gun, pointing it towards the ceiling of the room, before lowering it once again, this time aiming the pistol sight squarely at the space between the first alien's blazing orange eyes. What was your original mission on Earth? The room was silent. 
the aliens turned to look at Sterling and Witt before their gaze fell back on Sension. We were messengers. What message are you trying to deliver? We were delivering the prototype of a genetic modification to transform the humans of this planet to be the soldiers we needed. Soldiers? We've long been at war with another species. An enemy we have fought longer than mankind has existed on this planet. Our people have been decimated. The few of us that remain now inhabit vessels that are hidden throughout this galaxy. We need a new homeworld. And we need a new army to fight for us. You want to turn mankind into an army to fight for you? Our natural bodies are fragile. We needed to create a stronger species to defend us. One that would follow orders unfailingly. We have been testing this transformation on isolated populations on your planet. The Skaradoth! The ancient savages that Evangeline told us about. They were the initial test subjects. You infected them to make their minds more susceptible to telepathy and mental control. The perfect slaves. The perfect soldiers. That's what the Enforcers were. That's what you've been having Black Door create for you. A radiated army to help subdue mankind and occupy our planet. You'll turn us all into those... those abominations. Not all. You unspeakable demon. You told me you were trying to save the world, but you're trying to destroy it. Jason Sterling has been the architect to save the human race. In exchange for aiding the aliens, we have an agreement to set aside and protect a percentage of human population to make sure that no matter what happens, Humanity will, in fact, survive. How large a percentage are you talking about? It's been determined that a population of approximately 200,000 will provide sufficient genetic diversity to perpetuate the human race and allow biological prosperity. The island of St. Helena in the South Atlantic will be set aside and repurposed as a sanctuary for mankind. Food, housing, all our needs will be met and provided. No disease, no poverty, no want or war. A Garden of Eden, isolated on one of the most remote islands on Earth. Within a century, the next generation of humanity will never have known anything different. They will be protected and cared for. By their captors? You're... you're joking. You can't be serious. We're very serious. This is the only way to save the world and protect humanity. And you believe them? They'll kill us all. They don't want to save us. Not even a small percentage. No. They need us. They need their soldiers. That's why you need 200,000. Not for genetic diversity. That's too high a number. It's a breeding population. You're making a mistake. A very costly one. A new world order is coming. You can be one of us, Sinchin. You and Rebecca can be one of the chosen. And let me guess who will be the supreme leader of this game preserve. Who gets to rule over what's left of humanity? Whit Roberts and I will be assuming executive leadership positions, and we'll be responsible for liaising with the Seraxians. Sension turned the gun back on Sterling and aimed directly at his reddened skull. You sold out your entire species. You perverted, sick, power-hungry mutant. Goodbye, Jason. <laughs> Rebecca. Rebecca Von Art stood painfully straight, as stiff as a board with her head locked back with her face pointing towards the ceiling. We have your friend. We are holding her mind. Let her go. Release her. Lower your weapon, or we'll tear her mind apart. Sentient, no! Stop! We will allow you and the woman to live if you lower your weapon and activate the control panel. Never. Sension tightened his grip and pushed the muzzle of his wolfer hard into the skin of Jason's skull. Sterling now stood motionless with his eyes closed. Listen to us, immortal. We will escape and we will complete our mission. Our people's arrival at your planet is inevitable. The fate of your friend's life is now up to you. Come on, Sension. Haven't you had enough blood on your hands? Don't lose Rebecca, too. Be reasonable. Don't speak to me again. We have paralyzed the portion of her brain called the medulla oblongata. It controls her breathing as well as her heartbeat. I've always wondered, after living so long underwater, how long can you immortals hold your breath? 
Rebecca's eyes now roll towards the back of her head as her body spasmed into uncontrollable shudders. My guess is not that long. Release Jason Sterling and activate the control panel. Sension strained to gaze at Rebecca. Her legs suddenly gave out and she collapsed into a heap on the dusty stone floor. While drool and saliva foamed from her mouth, her chest was now heaving desperately. Sension. All right, you win. Let her go. Just let her go and let her breathe. Now. Sension dashed forward and placed his hand on the deep carving of the twin dragons, bringing the stone console to life. The black obsidian disc seemed to pulse with energy as Whit Roberts stepped forward, snatching the Walther pistol out of Sension's hand. Thank you for making the right choice. Sension ran back to Rebecca's fallen body, laying limp in the doorway to the antechamber. Her breaths were frantic and erratic. It's okay. It's okay, Rebecca. I'm here. I'm here now. Come on. I'm going to keep you safe. It's okay. Just breathe. The aliens quickly walked over to examine the stone control console that was now alive with flashing lights and dials. Is it working? Yes. The buffer portal is now active. Good. Now kill the girl anyway. No! The fewer immortals around, the better. Something leapt to the ground to hold Rebecca. He frantically swept her into his arms as her body thrashed from the inferno in her mind. She could feel the aliens picking apart pieces of her mind, scrambling her every thought and racking her body with pain. Within moments, she had no longer possessed any conception of what her name was, or where she was, or even what she was. Her consciousness had been reduced to static, and she stared at Sension with vacant, crazed eyes. Stop it! Stop it! No, please! No! 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 Every nerve ending seared with agony until finally Rebecca's body fell limp and collapsed in Sension's arms. He held her gently in his arms and allowed all of his tears and all of his pain to flow from his eyes. He thought how still her chest was and how light her body felt and that he would never get the chance to introduce her to all the places and all the things she had missed while assuming another person's identity for the last decade, all in the name of the rebellion, all because Sension had asked her to. He wiped his face and rose slowly, clenching his fists while his lips twisted in anger. Listen to my words. You will never leave this station alive. I will just- Sorry, Senshin. I really don't have the patience for another one of your grand speeches. You see, we have a tight schedule to keep- No, 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 no! Instantly, everything Senshin could see flashed into a blinding whiteness. He floated through the room, suspended in the air, hovering above the ancient stone floor. When his body crashed down to the ground and his eyes regained the ability to see, he found himself in the antechamber room where they had first found the aliens. There was now a three-inch hole at the right side of his chest, and the metallic taste of blood had filled his mouth. Whip raised the wolf for higher, aiming the gun at the deep wrinkle in the center of Sension's forehead. But before he could pull the trigger, Sension's hand slammed on the wall, and the heavy stone door that separated the two chambers shot upwards, sealing Sension into the room. Damn it! Damn it! You think that door is going to save you? You think you can hide from what's coming? You're dead, Senshin. You've been dead for years and you're too arrogant to see it. You can hide all you want, but you will never, ever see daylight again. Do you hear me? This is your tomb. This is your fucking tomb. Wit. Wit. It doesn't matter. Senshin isn't going anywhere. Wit stared at Jason, who was gazing at the aliens and nodding his head slightly. We're going to turn this entire temple into a bomb that will reduce every brick in this place into mere grains of sand. It'll blow a hole in the ground a mile wide. No one is going to save Sension this time. The aliens paid no mind to Sterling or Wit as they spoke, but continued to work fluidly across the control console. The black disc in the middle of the room shimmered with the sparks of light contained within. The disc's illumination grew in intensity, turning almost complete white before a new image emerged inside. The image was hazy, but that of a long hallway, with rows of fur-lined alpine exposure suits on the left, and rows of combat assault rifles on the right. The walls looked to be reinforced by heavy steel girders, and the hallway was illuminated by the same nondescript fluorescent lighting that one might find in any office building in America. The hallway seemed to lead to a much larger room that could not be discerned through the haziness of the portal. We have established a connection to the crossbow facility. 
The obsidian disk in the center of the room pulsed with energy and radiance. Destabilization will occur in 60 seconds. Do you hear that, Sension? Not much time left. Is this how you thought your immortality would end? After so many centuries of being alive, huh? With you hiding behind a wall? Like a coward? I know you can still hear me, Sension. Sterling walked closer to the wall. You know, the true sign of a leader is if his movement will live on after the leader's death. I suspect your little rebellion will die along with you in a few moments. All the immortals you let out of Leviathan will go crawling back to Evangeline or McAllen, begging to have their lifespans extended. All those deaths your rebellion caused will be for nothing. Jason, we're losing stability on the portal. We've got to jump now. Goodbye, Sension. I really look forward to you being a slave. And with that, Jason smiled, allowing his graying teeth to flash against his crimson skin. He turned and followed Wit, who was assisting the two Seraxian aliens, as the four of them calmly walked onto the raised platform and jumped into the glowing disc and completely disappeared from the continent of Africa. Ascension looked down at his hands, now covered and dripping with his own blood. His shirt was completely drenched and he shivered with the chill brought on by his copious blood loss. He shifted slightly to his left and felt the foreignness of the bullet that was still lodged inside of his chest, pushing on his lung like a burning hot needle. Don't black out. Focus. Focus. You can't go to sleep. Not yet. Rebecca, can you... But he stopped when he remembered that Rebecca wasn't in the room with him, and that oh. even though her body was in the oh. next room, she would never be able to respond to him again, ever. Rebecca, I... Rebecca... Sension tried to quiet his breathing, and pushed his ear against the stone door to listen for any signs of Whit Roberts or Jason Sterling. They were leaving, right, to get the aliens to that place. The ground started to vibrate harshly under Sension's body, and a stone block weighing several hundred pounds collapsed from the ceiling, exploding into rubble a few feet from Sension. If that had landed on me, I wouldn't have been able to move it. I wouldn't have been able to avoid it. I've got to get out of here. I've got to move, otherwise... Blinding pain shot through Sension's body as he leaned against the stone wall for support and inched his body back up to a standing position. He pushed his hand against the wall, activating the stone door. He paused and steeled himself for the sudden attack by Whit Roberts and Jason Sterling that he still believed might happen. But there was none. The temple shook violently, rocking Rebecca's body that was lying on the ground. But Sterling and Roberts, as well as the two Seraxians, were gone. They escaped. My god, they actually did it. But where could they... A dark foreboding washed over Sension as he remembered. A new world order is coming. Sension clenched his eyes in agony and limped into the main control room, where he saw the illuminated disc glowing in the center of the room. He painfully moved forward, peering into it and saw the long, bunker-like hallway and the distant silhouettes of Sterling Roberts and the aliens walking away. They created a portal. They, they must have reversed the keyhole direction. I can't go after them. Not like this. They destroy me in seconds. But they can't get away. Someone has to stop them. The stone column on the right buckled like it was made of paper and collapsed upon the console, smashing and destroying half of the control mechanisms. Sension looked up at the monitor on the far wall that displayed a grid map of Canada, zoomed in on the remote territory of Nunavut. A blinking beacon was displayed on Devon Island, relaying coordinate information as well as temperature, wind, security status, and most importantly, portal integrity. The light next to it shone green. No, there's still one way. You're not free yet, Jason. Ascension turned back to what remained of the control panel and started furiously utilizing the buttons and dials that hadn't been smashed. I can't get a clean lock. There's got to be some way to connect to another keyhole. Several pieces of the ceiling collapsed, smashing into the monitor. The images flickered but were difficult to discern through the cracked edifice. The grid map swerved off Canada and wobbled towards images of the northeastern United States, the United Kingdom and Asia. The zoomed map seemed shaky and unsteady, finding several keyholes and then suddenly veering off. If I can't get a lock on the specific keyhole, 
and I need to aim the portal stream at a cluster, wherever I can find the greatest concentration of keyholes. Sentron urgently inputted more coordinates into the control panel before he looked up at the screen and then saw the portal disk in the center of the room glow and pulse with white light. I have to make sure. I have to make sure. Sentron spied his backpack still lying on the floor across the room. In his condition, across the room felt like kilometers, but he willed himself to walk over and rummage through it. Not much time. Come on in here somewhere. Ah, oh, yes. A pen, my last weapon after all this technology. Just a pen and paper to destroy you, Star. Just a stroke of a pen. Sentron opened his eyes wide as he momentarily lost focus. He scribbled furiously on a small piece of paper in the notepad he found in his pack. He ripped the note out and quickly stuffed it in the pockets of his cargo pants. Another pillar collapsed four feet away from Sentron as more ceiling tiles began dropping down from above. No time left. The room began to spin, and Sentron could no longer discern the implosions within the temple from his own deteriorating state of consciousness. God, I pray to you now. He rose from kneeling beside his pack and was surprised to see most of the room had now been destroyed. Amazingly, the disc in the center remained intact. Give me the last strength I'll need. Ascension strained to take in one long, labored breath and then stumbled as fast as he could towards the glowing disc. The entire room now seemed on the verge of collapse. A little further. As the walls began to shake so violently that each stone brick within was pulled loose. Please, God, just a few more seconds. The disc was just ahead. Almost there. A few steps ahead of Sentron went. <laughs> The entire temple finally collapsed, crashing down upon itself and sending a spectacular plume of dust and rubble shooting forth from the sinkhole and over 2,000 feet into the African sky. The roar in the jungle surrounding the sinkhole was deafening as the banyan trees were blown outwards causing more trees to fall and domino outwards. The ground in the surrounding jungle shook for over 15 miles, sending the animal inhabitants of the Congo shrieking for cover and hiding in deep holes in the ground. The cascading cacophony of falling trees continued for almost 30 minutes through dusk, until finally the jungle grew silent and fell into darkness. You have been listening to The Leviathan Chronicles. The Leviathan Chronicles was written and created by Christoph Lepupka, produced by Robin Shaw, produced and musical composition by Luke Allen, directed by Nobi Nakanishi. For a full list of cast and crew, or to purchase the ad-free director's cut, go to leviathanchronicles.com. Thank you for supporting us, and thank you for listening. To discover more podcasts set in the Leviathan universe, go to leviathanaudioproductions.com or follow us on Facebook or Twitter. Leviathan Audio Production.